Hey coach, welcome back to the podcast and welcome to another episode with my friend Andrew Casal from Val Valor Accounting Services. How are you, Andrew, today? I'm very well, Leo. How are you doing? Very well. I'm always looking forward to our, our little chats um, and, and catching up. Yeah, same here, same here. Fantastic. Right, so today is a really interesting topic. It's well, we're going to be talking about business funding, right? That's something that a lot of coaches that I speak to ask me about, but there's also a lot of coaches that don't actually know what business funding is. So as we discussed off air, right, I feel this is something that's going to be of value to a lot of coaches. And what a, what what best person than yourself, Andrew, to talk uh, to our audience about business funding? Ah, those are nice words there, Leo. <laughs> awesome. Over to you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, thanks for that, Leo. So, yeah, uh, I think business funding is a very important topic, you know, for, for for business owners and, you know, sports coaches where they're looking to uh, improve their business in some sort of way. Yeah. So we're going to first look about look, look in terms of the reasons uh, for funding and the different types of uh, funding that a you know a sports uh, sports coach may may be looking for um at any stage of their business so the first one is okay what are the reasons for um for looking why would a sports coach look to uh to to help um fund their business a few a few here uh, just to touch on you know expansion growth that's probably one of the most Obvious ones, common ones, is they're looking to uh, expand their business. They may want to rent larger um, premises. Mm -hmm. They may want to hire additional coaches. And they may not have uh, enough funding uh, currently to, to, to make that happen. They might want to get new equipment, brand new equipment, which will hopefully, down the line, uh, bring more business into the um you know into into the company um and they may want to grow quicker mm -hmm. they may want to just have that funding to allow them to grow quicker and they may want to sell the business in the future and then do something else after so there's also that as well and other things as well is marketing campaigns they may want to look for funding to allow them to do a, a one-off marketing campaign maybe once in a year and it may take a bit of an investment to to do that. So so yeah, and you know there's other other reasons. For example, just to finance some of their expenditure. Maybe they want to replace equipment. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe some day to day things. They might be. They, they may look for debt. Uh, so they might they may be in debt for some sort of reason. They might want to look into recover from you know external factors and you know it could be depending on the the economic climate like mm -hmm. for example the pandemic which is a is, is a really good example where it's just something outside of uh you know of their control and luckily the government were able to to, to assist during that time with the things like bounce back loans and things like that mm -hmm. and uh you know maybe things like seasonality i know we've spoken about this in you know the previous podcasts and it just keeps coming up again and again and when we talk about seasonality it's about you know certain times during the year where a sports coach may be you know particularly quiet not much business come, going in uh and it really depends on the type of you know uh you know sports coaching business they have you know what type of sports it is yeah. and another reason could just be poor financial management you know mm -hmm. maybe they've been you know trading for for a number of months or a number of years and they've not been very careful with seeing where the numbers are going maybe there's been increases in certain expenditure maybe they've not increased their prices and and then all of a sudden they're not being able to 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 pay for you know operational expenditure and things like that so that might be another reason as well yeah yeah and another one could be just being prepared you know, there's nothing wrong with seeking funding just for a rainy day. Yeah. And uh, especially when, for example, if, you know, there's, you want to open up a, a line of credit and, you know, interest rates are good 
or there's an opportunity where you can um, you know get a business loan or uh, open up a credit card and have it there you know you don't have to use it you can have it there because maybe during the times where something you know something hits the fan yeah. <laughs> so to speak yeah. then um then then you've got it you've got it ready you don't have to apply for it you don't have to wait for it so you know prepared for being prepared is, is something that can be quite good mm-hmm. um, yeah. yeah no great great uh great start um and also for those coaches watching it's i mean this is something we're going to talk about but there's obviously different types of funding that you can get. If you're a private limited company, then you can apply for a certain amount of funding. If you're a nonprofit, there will be some support as well. So, uh, the, yeah, this is something we're going to touch on later, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. And um, so, yeah, and I think we'll, we'll start with the, the basic one is self-funding, which is called bootstrapping. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, it's... Um, it's it's I, I guess really there's two common scenarios that we come across and obviously you, you've come across this as well leo working with 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 sports coaches is that you get a lot of uh you know b- business owners that are looking to start their sports coaching business and they maybe got a full-time job right and it may be in 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 you know maybe in sports maybe in other areas and they want to kind of taper off that so when they start earning money from their you know side business they want to then um grow that mm-hmm. still having this you know the, the full-time employment then maybe switch to part-time until that business grows or you, there's another scenario where that sports coach just quits their job they have savings they've got a, you know a decent business plan and they just like they're just saying to themselves you know what i'm just going to go into this and whatever income I earn from my sports coaching business, I'm just going to reinvest it back in, in, into the business. Yeah. Got some savings to help me, you know, um, for, for, you know, a certain period of time. And that's, that's very common as well, you mm-hmm. know, and, you know, bootstrapping, that could also mean if that works out, or there's another way that you've, you, you're running your own business, there are obviously pros and cons to this, right? Obviously the pros is, you get full control. It's your business. You can do what you want with it. You've got no debt, for example, because you're funding it yourself. Yeah. And that means that you're not having to make you know interest payments and, and things like that. So so that, that's obviously quite good as well. And all the profits are yours. You know, all the money is yours and you can do whatever you want to do with this. You can invest however much you want and then take out whatever you want for, from the business. Mm-hmm. The cons are it could be slower growth. You know, it could be slower growth in terms of the opportunities you might get from the additional funding. And also we will talk about when you do get funding, depending on how it's done, if you partner up with someone uh, and if you get an investor, there could be opportunities where you get some sort of mentorship um, where you can bounce, you know, ideas off with, with them. And that could also like help speed up that, that, that you know, that process. Whereas if you're bootstrapping, it tends to be a bit slower, but you, but having said that, nothing to say you can do networking events, thinking outside the box is definitely one for um, someone who wants to sell fund. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. This is very, something very similar. We talk to, to coaches about when they're first starting, you know, I mean, this is something we're going to talk about, but a lot of coaches, when they're first starting, they want to take out loans. They want to take out credit cards but sometimes we say to them, it's it's better to start off with money that you already have and learn how to manage it in a way where you, as you said, you've got full control. You're not going to be paying any interest and investing it into maybe networking events, maybe advertising, or maybe just, you know, getting in front of your audience and growing that way so kind of it's kind of growing organically to the point where right to get to the next level now i may need to get out a credit card or i may need to get a loan um but i think a lot of coaches make the mistake at the beginning of right i need to take out a loan because i need to pay for a website i need to pay for this pay for that where there are other ways that you can do it without getting into debt straight away 
with your with your business yeah that's such an important point and you know there's nothing to say there's nothing to say that you know you, you can take out other sources of funding you know especially if it's a loan uh things like that because that could help you um you know start your business uh and, and grow it to, to a certain point where you're happy with it and then you pay off that loan but yeah. the, the the caveat here is you have to have and I say a business plan it doesn't necessarily have to be a business plan, but you have to have some sort of plan where you know that you're going to make X amount of payments and have plan B's if that doesn't work out. And I you know speak to speak to spe specialists about that who have been you know through that you know sports coaches mm -hmm. um, or people who help sports coaches, uh, finance professionals. Uh, do your research because. The last thing you want to do, and as you mentioned, Leo, is having that debt um, from the get-go, and that can be that that can that can sting you quite badly, um, especially down the line. Or, or, and it could, it, you know, it could fold your business as well, you yeah. know, if it's not done properly. So, yeah. So yeah. And something we we talked about off air, and I know you, you mentioned to me is the percentage of businesses that fail within the first year or two. So imagine yeah. you take out a massive loan and your business fails within that year, right? You've got this massive loan that then you've got to pay off uh, without even having a business. So yeah. that's why it, I, I feel it's better to kind of start with what you have, whether it's just a little bit of savings and figure a way to multiply those savings and just use it to get in front of parents, advertise yourself, and just show your audience what you do and then turn those audience into p potential paying clients. So then that brings a revenue into the, into the business. Yeah, no, look, I, I agree. And it's, it, it, and especially in this day and age, you know, being resourceful is key yeah. and it can be done. Yeah. Brilliant. So, okay. Uh, first is equity financing. So what is equity financing? So essentially what it is, is, you're getting someone to own a portion of the business for an amount of money. And that amount of money, you can then help invest in, in your business. Now, obviously, if they own a portion of that, they're going to get certain rights to that. So the profits, um, they get a portion of the profits as well. And a good thing about that as well is, you know, as I mentioned before, you, you're working with others. Maybe... They could be someone who is further ahead. Maybe they've already built an established sports coaching business. And they're now looking to help, you know, startups, yeah. but they want to invest in, in them, give them a bit of mentorship, own a percentage of that. That's great as well, right? And it allows them, that small business to, that starting business to grow a lot quicker, have that like mentorship there. And so that is obviously an option and there could other be as well, just investors, you know, investors that want to, invest, like they may want to invest in a football, a football uh, coaching business where they want to make sure that they want to have like more kids, you know, learning football. So they want to invest in that. So, yeah. so that they, there's definitely options there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, like oh, yeah and and now we're talking government funding right so this is this is the one where a lot of a lot of sports coaching business and just other businesses alike are very interested in because the juicy one the juicy side good, yeah because this is the one where there's very little downside in terms of once you get that grant um we're talking about grants here uh in terms of government funding there are other types but the main ones uh is grant you know grant schemes grant um, sorry, government schemes, government grants, where you you get the amount of money and you can essentially use that in the business. Now, most of the time, the requirements are initially before you get the grant. After you get the grant, that's it's it's however you see fit. Yeah. With that, now there are depending on the type of grant it is, there may be stipulations in there where you can't actually apply for another grant after you know b before five years and things like that so so that's one thing um obviously the good the good side which a lot of people know is you don't have to give up any of your equity 
You don't have to give up any of your control in your business. you It's not a debt. It's not like a loan or a credit card. Mm-hmm. So this this option is quite appealing, uh, you know, to 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 business owners uh, and you know, obviously sports sports coaches as well. And the the tricky bit with this one though is it's very competitive. It's very mm-hmm. very competitive because also there's obviously be other business owners that are looking for. There's only an X amount of grants available, mm-hmm. right? So and also another thing is it can be quite time consuming mm-hmm. because. You have there's a, a massive um, box tick exercise that you've got to do, yeah. uh, and there may be different stages. But as I said, the benefit of that once you get through that, and if you do get the um, that funding, then then it's it's more or less easy sailing from there. Now mm-hmm. we're going to touch on not for profit. So there are opportunities for sports coaches that want to have a bit more of a, like a social enterprise where. It's not really um, for profit, and they want to help the community. Yeah, there are options as well for funding, and you know that that's really really good because if you want to do something to impact, you know, your, the community, there are there are options available. However, the downside is the the requirements are even even more stringent yeah. um, for obvious reasons, right? So. That's another avenue as well. If you're a social enterprise or looking to set up a social enterprise, um, there is also that that option as well. Yeah, it's a good point you make because there's a lot of coaches that we work with. What they do is they have a for-profit business and then they open up an, a non-profit to work with maybe clients that are less well-off in, in certain areas of the country who might not be able to afford private training. So they run certain events throughout the year. They get sponsorship to run them and stuff like that. So great, great that you brought that up because it is something that's quite common. And a lot of coaches do what, what a lot of coaches see is that, right. A lot of my parents can't afford my services. Okay, great. How can I then create something that is more affordable and a lot of coaches go down that route of maybe opening up a, a, a branch of the business where it's more focused to, uh, well, where it's more affordable for parents to train. So it might be like a, a an event such as a camp or a clinic or, or maybe a league, a weekly league or, or something that gets more of the community involved. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and you know, there's nothing to say that that side of that, you know, business where it's not for profit, that could also complement, you know, the, the actual for profit side, because you're getting more, you know, you're getting more attention, you're getting more exposure, which is which is really, really good. Yeah. Um, one thing I would say on that is, you know, have had, you know, sports coaches that they've thought about setting up a social enterprise, and having that idea of a for profit, and then a not for profit. And, I think a, mon- a common mis- misconception is because I spoke to a, a specialist within, um, you know, social enterprise, and they mentioned that one of the biggest mistakes is trying to have this com- combine it in one in one uh, business structure. Very hard to do because if you're mixing profit um, for profit, your for profit side with a not for profit side, it can be quite messy. And also, yeah. You're not going to get. You're not going to get investors. You're not gonna get the government. They they they're quite funny about that because you're mixing it. So always good um, to have you know a separate um, a separate you know business vehicle for that. Um, to, to that specialise in in the social enterprise side of things. Yeah, and just touch on one one other thing. If if you're a coach watching and you're in the uh, football slash soccer uh, field. Something, for example, that the Premier League clubs do to separate the two is you've got, obviously, the the club, which is a for-profit. And then what they do is they open a branch up, which is normally a foundation. And the foundation is the non-profit side and that they go into schools. uh, They do weekly, they run weekly sessions where they they still charge parents for those sessions, but it's at a very discounted rate 
Um, and that's just more of an inclusive type of services service they're offering. So I'll take an example. If you take Fulham, you've got Fulham Football Club, which run, they've got like their profit site. And then you have Fulham Foundation, which is, is like a separate business in one, but they focus more on like the community aspect and just getting their, the brand out into the community. So if you are in soccer, even if you're not in soccer, go and have a look at different clubs in the Premier League because this is something they all do. They've got their foundations, foundation type of service where you go into the community and then you've obviously got the, the full profit side as well. Yeah, no, brilliant. And um, okay, so then we move on to debt financing. So this is a very, very common one very common one so looking at the two main types which is you know credit card business credit cards also personal credit cards you know if you're if you're if you're self-employed which means that you're not a limited company you can always oh you know there's businesses that that have run you know successfully where they they've opened up a personal credit card and they're using that to fund their business <clears throat> now as mentioned before if you are a so self-employed business, you you and your your the non-business side of yourself, you're the same thing. You're you're the same legal entity. So um whereas with a with a company, it's it's different. So uh so there, there's that side of it. But essentially you're using your credit cards to fund um your business. Now, if we're looking at a business credit card or even a business loan as well, is it's going to be based on your financial performance. How how it, can you afford to make those repayments? And especially with a loan, uh, business loan, you're going to have to you have to show them your 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 financial statements. Mm -hmm. Show that from a financial standpoint that your business is 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 healthy enough to make those repayments, which is obviously good. Credit card, there's less of that really. Um, there's less of a, a microphone, not a microphone, um, a, a less of uh, looking into too deeply into your, you know, financial statements. Uh, but having said that, on both of those things, you know, I've got clients that they've, and as you mentioned as well, Leo, they started off with a credit card, mm -hmm. and their business doing really, really well, and it's now time to pay that back because. The the interest on that is just too high. Yeah. It's too high. And it's it's not it's not a good thing to have, especially in the future, if you want to expand and you've already got a credit card, but then you so you want to take out more debt in the future, which is okay. Mm -hmm. But if you've not paid off a previous loan or a previous debt, it's gonna be harder to find more, to secure more. So that's always something to be uh to have, mm -hmm. you know, keep an eye out um for. Yeah, like that. And okay, the other one. Now I thought just for completeness, um, friends and is it, family. Is this your bonus? This is your bonus. Yeah, this is a bonus one. <laughs> this is the bonus round. So, you know, yeah. So like this one is very common, especially for startups as well, mm -hmm. is friends and family help uh you know, they invest into the business, and that could be a, a gift, a gift of money, or they may want to loan. The, the business the money uh they may want to have a share in in the business however it needs to be what i would say is you know of course your it's trustworthiness but have things in place because if things go wrong they go wrong <laughs> ha have it in writing that you know yes yeah exactly have it in writing make sure there's uh at the end of the day is an agreement and yeah. have that agreement down yeah, you know, so so all parties uh, know exactly what they're in for and what are the risks because you know at the end of the day you don't want you don't want it to um, to take a wrong turn. <laughs> Fantastic, right, Andrew? Absolutely brilliant, brilliant information today. Uh, as I do on every program, I make notes as well while you're talking, so I learn a lot from you. Uh, so thanks, thanks for coming on again. Now, as I say to you every uh, every episode, if you were to sum up the different points you shared with us today, what would be your summary? 
Yeah, so this the summary would be if you're looking for funding, it's great for your business. Do it the right way. Speak to do your research. Speak to professionals, um, and that can help you grow your business. But the first thing you've got to do is understanding why you want to do it. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, perfect. Now, Andrew, if any coach watching wants to get in contact with you, what is the best way for them to reach out to you? Yeah, so they can just uh, reach out to me via my website. They can book in a free consultation call um, direct from my website. Mm. And um, and yeah, we can um, start a chat there. So details should be um, down below. That's how they do it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be in the description. Yes, the one. <laughs> perfect. And as well, if you're if you're a regular viewer and you have any questions, Drop them in the comments, right? This is something that we are going to be looking to do in uh, coming up, answering any questions that you guys might have in the comment section. Gives us more data, uh, but also gives us an opportunity to interact with you and have any questions answered that you might have about any episodes that we, we create. Right, Andrew, thank you again. And I look forward to our next one. Brilliant. Thanks, Leo. Yeah, looking forward to it.